It's a pleasure to sort of be here. I want to focus my remarks on uh, distributed energy resources in systems with electric grids. I think there's a lot of potential for village scale PV systems to provide very valuable power at relatively high cost. Uh, but that's not where I'm going to focus. I'm also going to uh, rely on experience in the U.S. to an important extent, since that's what I know. So let me talk first about distributed uh, photovoltaics, PV. These systems are growing very rapidly in the U.S. We've had more than 50% growth each of the last five years. Part of that stems from, if I may put it this way, the romantic appeal of rooftop solar. The notion of being self-sufficient with clean energy sounds great. It's also the case that per kilowatt hour, at least in the U.S., and I think generally, rooftop solar is subsidized more than utility-scale solar. Uh, we use an investment tax credit, and since rooftop solar has higher investment costs, that means per kilowatt of capacity, it's more highly subsidized than utility-scale. We also set retail rates according to net metering, which is to say we recover network costs through per kilowatt hour charges. Uh, that constitutes an extra subsidy, and I'm going to return to that in a little while. Uh, California in the United States leads the way, much the leader. It has sunshine, strong state incentives, and for many consumers, very high marginal electricity rates. Uh, it's not entirely clear the extent to which households understand the long-term contracts they sign in California with uh, distributed solar providers, but I'm not going to focus uh, on that. Let me emphasize, though, that rooftop uh, PV is much more expensive than utility scale per kilowatt hour. Uh, in part, that's a U.S. problem, but even in Germany, I believe, which has very good uh, regulations for rooftop solar. I believe that's true. Installation costs are higher, roofs are all different, and one can add to that that they're not necessarily optimi optimally aligned. Utilities in the U.S., which are required uh, in many cases to generate solar uh, electricity or to, to acquire it, and in some cases are anticipating such requirements, uh, care about cost. And so in the United States, utility scale solar will account for about three-quarters of new solar capacity this year, and it's generally been a good deal more important than rooftop. Let me say a little bit about batteries. Uh, again, batteries, especially distributed batteries, are much less important than distributed solar and show only modest growth. They're beginning to make sense as technology advances in distribution systems, and California is requiring some grid-level storage to deal with grid-level battery storage, uh, not pumped hydro, to deal with uh, its growing volume of wind and solar generation. There's very little distributed solar. It's expensive, uh, uh, even with recent advances, to have a storage unit in your home. And at least in the U.S., there's very little use of spot pricing so that the arbitrage opportunities that could be provided by batteries aren't there. Let me look a little bit down the road now, because uh, I think that's the, the question of potential is really central here. Unless you're a fan of nuclear power, um, that group diminishing, it's clear that renewables, wind and solar, must be very, play a very important part in future electricity systems, much more important than they do today. It's hard to imagine as a technical matter how such a system works without relatively inexpensive grid-level storage. We don't have that on the horizon. Getting it seems to me to be an important research task. But now, in a, in a low-carbon system dominated by renewables, should distributed photovoltaics, and I will rule out distributed storage at the moment since that's uh, a distant dream, should, dis should CO2, distributed photovoltaics, play an important role? Well, I, I would argue, at least in the U.S., the answer is no. Uh, the, the emissions reduction benefits are the same as uh, utility-scale solar, much higher installation costs, rooftops may not be optimally oriented, there are operational issues associated with rooftop solar, it's often not curtailable, it can appear quickly, 
uh, in uh, uh, locations that are unanticipated. Hawaii is, in the U.S. context, an interesting example. They often have to curtail, not often, at least sometimes have to curtail utility-scale solar to make room for unanticipated power flows from uh, residential solar. I think in the U.S., a central planner wouldn't do uh, rooftop solar. Um, it may be different in Europe, where land is uh, scarcer, but in the U.S., I think not. I would also say that distributed solar, while it may cut, often does cut, transmission line losses, it often does require, particularly at high penetration, uh, reinforcement of the distribution system to handle reverse power flows. So the, the notion that it's all savings is just as a technical matter incorrect. But look, it's clearly not going to be politically possible to cut subsidies for uh, distributed generation. Uh, one can hope for uh, equal subsidies across uh, distributed and utility scale solar um, or a very significant price on carbon. I think in any conceivable world, though, because of the politics, uh, some consumer and the romance, some consumers will opt for rooftop solar, which is fine. I don't believe in central planning. Uh, but I don't think that many if subsidies were equalized. Um, the question of defection from the grid was raised. Again, I, I think that's not going to be uh, a huge deal in systems with well-functioning grids. The whole reason developed countries built uh, grids that span large geographic areas is reliability. So the notion that reducing the sources of generation from many to one will enhance reliability uh, is somewhat dubious a proposition. Uh, you, you, having solar on your roof can uh, reduce the cost of uh, having a, uh, a distribution line go down, but the notion that lots of people will disconnect uh, is, um, uh, I think, uh, far-fetched. But some will, uh, and most who do will rely on the grid for backup services. Pricing backup services, I think, will be important and controversial. And whether defections become important or not, with the rise of distributed energy resources, the design of retail tariffs has become more complex, more controversial, and I think more important. At least in the U.S., and I think in many other areas, uh, fixed costs of distribution systems, fixed network costs, are primarily recovered uh, by volumetric charges, per kilowatt hour charges. Uh, that's a simple regime, and it sort of seems fair until you think about the fact that uh, uh, wealthy people with large homes can more easily d uh, take advantage of the um, subsidies of uh, rooftop solar than poorer people living in uh, rental units. The problem is, then, that under volumetric recovery of fixed costs, when someone installs rooftop solar, they cease to pay... Uh, uh, as much for toward the recovery of fixed costs. That means either the distribution utility takes a bath, uh, loses that income, or the costs are shifted. And at least in the U.S., uh, people have become aware of the cost shifting, and it's led to a backlash against distributed uh, solar. It's important to redesign retail tariffs so that, A, they can be understood by regulators, B, they can bear some reasonable relation to cost causality, and third, so that they can be widely perceived as fair. Uh, my sense is there's a lot of abstract discussion about the principles that should guide such a redesign, but very few worked examples, and we need worked examples. With that, let me stop. I look forward to uh, our discussion in a little while. And uh, thank you very much for your attention.